Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank the witnesses for being here. Um, I'm going to take this opportunity to pound a drum that the members of the committee who are here have heard me pound before, and perhaps you haven't, and I hope you will join me and assist me. Um, while I sit on this side of the chair, which might indicate a party affiliation, I was not elected by my constituents to serve along the lines or ideas of any particular individual, whether they occupy this august legislative body or a beautiful white home on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And I am a staunch advocate of the McGovern Dole School Feeding Program, which we have seen cuts in over the past uh, year, not only cuts, but proposed further cuts. Uh, I would speak to essentially the reduction and radicalization amongst males in a populace wherein females are empowered by virtue of education and would ask you all if that's not an accurate characteristic. And I'm going to bounce around the committee with no intended offense. Ms. Biggio, am I pronouncing it right? Where you see more educated women, do you see a reduction in radicalization amongst the male population? And I, and I got, I apologize because I'm, I'm, I'm running a timer. And, and so what the school feeding program does is creates um, an alternative to a paradigm where in a world of subsistence farming, a mother and father might need to choose whether to put their daughter in a field to essentially cultivate the food that she might eat or where they might allow her to gain an education because the food that she needs in order to live is provided in exchange essentially for that education. Is that an accurate characterization, Mr. Rafiq? Yeah, absolutely. And again, and I apologize for how I do this, but I hope that there are people listening not only in this, this room, but uh, across this country, in this city, and across the world. And, and so when you see female educational attainment, we also see uh, a corresponding rise in economic opportunity within a society for both men and women. Is that generally accurate, Ms. Popple? Yes, it is. And so when you see that rise in, 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 in economic empowerment, we see a corresponding rise in things like hope, and it's uh, perhaps um, cliche, but probably quite real, that a young person who has hope to aspire towards some dream or goal in the future is less likely to strap a bomb vest to themselves, for example. Is that broadly accurate, uh, Ms. Ms. Hudson? Absolutely. Grievance comes from despair. And so the problem that I would see with this program um, is that it's hard to quantify the terrorists who were never created. In other words, we invest on the front end, we don't know what horrible acts we've, we've prevented on the back end, and then a way that we can do this that empowers not just women but people is school feeding programs, which encourages the education of young women, which elevates almost uniformly entire societies and leads to a reduction in radicalization. I've got two minutes remaining. If y'all can try to keep to 30 seconds, Dr. Hudson, would you, and I'm, just bounce down the line, speak to what you think might be positive outcomes of school feeding, if this might help empower women and reduce radicalization in nations where these sorts of things are a problem? Absolutely. The education of young people, both female and male, um, offers greater opportunities for economic advancement for them personally and for their families. It also offers them larger horizons in terms of greater knowledge about their world and their place in it and what they can do for good. Uh, so in, in all measures, both for girls and for boys, Keeping them in school and allowing them a basic education through school feeding programs is laudatory. Thank you. And, and I think it was, I believe, and I, I might misquote here, General Mattis, who said we can either provide foreign aid or we can start buying more bombs and bullets. And having served in the military, uh, I understand that there's a time and a place for everything, but I'd rather help people than kill them. Uh, Mr. Rafiq, if you could speak to school feeding and the potential to help women and thus help reduce radicalization and reduce terrorism. I think certainly it's one of the strategies that will pay off some dividends. However, I think there is a, a mistake to think that lack of education or royal, um, is the thing that actually drives extremism and, and terrorism. Um, the World Bank did a survey of foreign fighters in ISIS, uh, joined territory, uh, uh, held territory, and they found that the overwhelming majority of people had a higher education, a higher social standing than the national average of the countries that they came from. Zwahiri, the current leader of Al-Qaeda, is a leading surgeon, doctor. Bin Laden was an engineer, and there are many, many other people. And, so, and we certainly saw this, right? And I think the Bin Laden as an engineer uh, paradigm is a great one, but we saw this even in, during the, the uh, Mujahideen's fight against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. Having said that, it was a, almost a rite of passage, and I would point out that the countries from which these fighters generally come are countries where women aren't empowered economically and oftentimes aren't educated, so it might be a chicken and egg scenario. I apologize, I'm out of time. 
Uh, may I, would, would the chair indulge me for 45 seconds so I can let Ms. Popple and Ms. Biggio have a moment? I will indulge you, but you can get more questions asked in five minutes than anybody I've ever met, so, <laughs> and faster as well. But yes, you may. I just love being able to lead, Judge. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Popel, if you could speak to it. Yes, um, I actually would, would like to share just an, an example. Um, one of the women in our book, We Are Afghan Women, uh, Voices of Hope, Razia John, is the founder of the Zubli Education Center. Um, it's a private K-12 through girls school that provides more than 500 girls in Afghanistan with free education, uniforms, shoes, warm coats, and meals. That school has changed men's attitude so much so that they're willing to protect it and to send their daughters to college. Um, and this is just one concrete example that I wanted to share with you all. Thank you, Ms. Biggio. Biggio, I apologize if I get it wrong. Thank you, no, it, it's critical that you're focusing on this, on this important uh, issue. Uh, we certainly see that providing opportunities for women and girls, including for education, is what uh, seeds the ground for them to be able to contribute fully to their society. Uh, and when you have space and education programs where you have boys and girls learning together, engaging in dialogue together, it, it forms a, a, an avenue for them to, uh, to look at solving problems together in their societies as well. And so you're, you're bringing all of your resources in that country together to uh, advance and, um, and pursue uh, opportunities that will then uh, help to counter radicalization efforts. Uh, thank you all. Thank th thanks to the chair and the other members for, for their indulgence.